Welcome everyone to the Inspired Choices Network TV show. I am your host, Christine McIver, and today we have another inspiring guest, Lori Hawkins. Lori Hawkins is a curator, catalyst, and connector. She's a certified business success strategist, speaker, radio show host, trainer, and leader who drives revenue, results, and raving fans along with fulfillment and Flow. Lori's reputation is built on her unique ability to enable strategy and soul to coexist. She is a thought leader with the rare ability to both inspire and create actionable strategies. Welcome to the show, Lori. Thank you, Christine. I'm so excited to be here. I am Thank too. You. So today we're talking about strategy wrapped in soul. Lori, you know, you and I have known each other for about a year now mm -hmm. and I've come out to your events, I've heard you on the radio, I've, I've seen you on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, I've watched what you've been creating. Mm -hmm. And you really have a very rare gift. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm honored to have you say that, thank you. You do, and, and, and here's what I see. I've seen many leaders in the world. Yeah. I've seen many of them step out and they're speaking at us. Mm. They're telling us information. Um, they're nearly trying to convince us. Mm. What I see with you, and then this is where I want to learn and I want all of our, our viewers to learn too, is I see you actually invite us in. Mm. And you bring knowledge, you bring really tangible knowledge in the, in the world of business, but you do it in such a different way. And, and you have us really lean into connecting and creating community. Mm. And it's a very unique gift. Thank so you. that's where I would love to really have us learn. I'd like to start with, where, tell us your story. Where, where did you grow up? Tell us, tell us <laughs> your journey, sure. yeah. Um, I think, and it's interesting now being where I am at and being able to look back because I think when we're growing up, things happen and we don't recognize until we can look in the rear view mirror yes. what the impact really was. Right. So for me, I grew up on a farm in southwestern Ontario and I can tell you I was kicking and screaming to get away from the farm, right? Were it you? just I didn't feel like I belonged. It didn't make sense to me. I didn't like that that world until I can look in the rear view mirror and realize that what I learned through that process, it wasn't it wasn't about the farming. It was about community and connection and just belonging in a place which I really look back and realize I did right. and that I learned the importance of those things and carried them with me not really even knowing what they meant right. until you go through different stages of your life and business mm -hmm. and realize like that, that thing, that thing called community, right. which is so natural right. in a farming community. It is that that's really important mm -hmm. and I was missing it and I, I really wanted to find that again and then even deeper than that how do you create it within organizations within teams within within collectives within how whatever it is that you create even friendships within friendships right absolutely so yeah. so you you started out in a farming community I did. As did I. I know. <laughs> Not we, far from no, each we other. Far and from yeah, we didn't know each and other. And we didn't know each other, no. which is very, very funny, but now we do. Yeah. Um, and then tell me where you went. So did you go to university? Mm -hmm. Did you you moved away from that community for I a did. while? Where did you go yeah. to? So I went off to University of Guelph, okay. and uh, my goal was to work in large hotels. So to travel the world, work in hotels. And so I went and took a business degree with a major in hotel and food management. Okay. And uh, and then I moved out west and started working in hospitality. Oh wow! So that was my first career, and always in the back of my head because growing up, as much as I grew up on a farm, my father was actually a leader. He was a CEO in an organization, okay. and so we had that blend of growing up in small town and experiencing the world because he would take us on trips with him as well. Okay. And so that was a really neat, a neat thing, and I just had that calling to do that and thought I was going to live somewhere far away and when I got away I realized I want to go back to that community, I want to raise my family when I have my own children there. Right. So after I left university, went and worked in hospitality out west and I came back. So how long were you in hospitality? For? Uh, so six years because I even worked full time in my last year of university just to 
pay to, for, <laughs> to pay for yeah. university. Yeah, my, my parents thought it was really important for us to learn the value of money by paying for our own education, which I'm so grateful for now. I wasn't then. <laughs> I'm super grateful another for story. now. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> right. um, but when I came back, the little voice in my head was get a sales job. Because if you can learn sales, then you can do anything. And I knew that eventually I wanted to be in leadership. I loved hospitality. There were just a few things that weren't really connecting for me. Number one was it's not a, it's not a highly paid industry. Mm, right. And I had bigger dreams. Mm -hmm. And it's also not a great family industry. Right. So thinking about having kids and working till four in the morning sometimes, right? Even yes. when you got into management, it was a, a it's very, a grueling, it's, it's a, a grueling yes. industry. Loved it and took away from it the, you know, connection with people again, the service side of things, that hospitality and creating that environment. Right. Um, but I just, when I came back to Ontario, it was go find a sales career. So where did this, I, I, I love that what you said, Go find a sales job. Mm -hmm. Where did this get implanted? Like, where did you pick up on that? I would say, again, from my father at a young age, um, I do tell the story that when I was 12 years old, he said, we're going to learn how to sell. So you love to cook, which I did. So let's grow some stuff in the garden and let's have you make what you would make and then we'll go to the local trailer park and you <laughs> will, I'll drive you around in the back of the truck and you can learn how to sell. Wow. And what was amazing about that is when I look now is it was about connecting again with people. It was about creating relationship. It was about just being authentic. Here I have an amazing thing that you might want. I baked a fresh pie. Right. You might really love that tonight for your barbecue. And so I'm so grateful now. What was that like for you initially? Were you nervous or excited? I or? think I was too young to have the fear. Okay. Right? It's like, I don't know why it popped in my head, but it's like skiing. When you're young, right. you don't have that fear. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Perfect. And he was such, is such a natural connector that I just followed him. I did what he did, which was, you know, hey, how are guess what we have these amazing pies you get a peach or blueberry <laughs> and Lovely. it was and it was that connection of gift right so I was I had the gift of being able to bake and he taught me the gift of being able to connect right and we were in our community right so yes. who doesn't want to support of course. someone in their so community. they would know you and and that that started to build up your confidence right and, and your enjoyment, I would imagine, mm -hmm. of actually connecting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if we don't, you know, a lot of people talk about networking, mm -hmm. and you have a fabulous group called um, the SOAR community. The SOAR yep. community, and it's a fabulous networking mm -hmm. community. But when you, when a lot of us think about networking, it's like, oh gosh, yeah. I'm like somebody trying to sell me something, or mm -hmm. it's going to be humdrum. Yours is completely not that at mm, all thank you <laughs> but it it really is that you know what what was your first exposure to it mm -hmm. and and how did you how did you actually just step into connecting with people because a lot of people are very nervous they're very mm. shy they don't actually take that first step and mm. yet it became part of who you are mm -hmm. not just something that you turned on and off mm -hmm. So yeah. that's a big, big gift. What do you do, Lori, when you meet people? Because you have now, you finished that career, you mm -hmm. went into sales, mm -hmm. and it, how long were you in sales for? So I was the first female wood product salesperson in Canada. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what did you, you sold wood? I sold wood. Lori, I, I did. Know this I about did, you. yes. And uh, in a traditional old boys kind of environment, I had a very forward thinking leader who hired me. And I stayed in that business for three years. It taught me so much about sales, about sales in an uncomfortable environment, about sales where I maybe wasn't as accepted because now this isn't my community. And just learning a product and industry which helped leap me into, I really just love to learn. And then I went okay. into telecommunications. Okay. And I stayed there. So I was in a, you know, a traditional sales, carry the bag kind of role for about 15 years. Okay. And then into what sales kind of leadership. What were you selling? <laughs> Sorry, I know they're, I'm sorry I'm thinking that. Yeah, tell me, what, were you, what kind of wood so were you selling? So I would visit kitchen cabinet makers, home builders, uh, anybody that 
did something with the wood and turned it into a beautiful product. So I sold particle board and lumber <laughs> and I went to the mill. Oh, oh yeah. That's amazing. I know. That it is was, so cool. It was but really cool. But you were in for that long. Yes. You must have been enjoying it. I really just love it. It was my first real sales job. And so I just had that youthful, what can I, I was a sponge. What can I learn? And I did have an amazing leader that really took that opportunity to, you know, feed into the sponge. Right. Not just about the product itself, because he had such a passion for that. Also the, how can I help this young woman really become the best version of herself in a sales career? taught me so much. It was what a gift. It was amazing. What an absolute yeah. gift. Because a lot of people, and I would I imagine he was he was much senior to you. Yeah. Um, then would not have been interested in and in, or even believe that a woman could do that no. job. No. And most of the honestly, most of the men in the organization were not happy. So it was it was a push pull. I really had to learn how to build that no like trust which up until that point hadn't been something difficult. It was difficult in this environment. I had to build the trust. Wow. They had to see that I was willing to do the work and I was willing to ask questions and I was willing to still, you know, they were the experts. Yes. How could I partner with them? So it was, I learned a lot in that first few years about leadership and about, about connection again. That, that word keeps coming up today. Yes. Yes. And then going into telecom at an interesting time when competition had just opened for telecommunications really in about the what three a, years before. What a journey. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah, just a really, really neat opportunity to truly understand selling. No kidding, on yes. so many different platforms. On so many different platforms. Okay, mm -hmm. we have to take a, a quick break. Okay. And then we get back, I wanna dive in deeper. So okay. stay tuned everyone, we'll be back here with Lori Hawkins curator, connector, and catalyst, and uh, we'll talk more about soul and strategy. Stay tuned. Have you thought about bringing your voice to the world? Are you looking to have a global platform that you can connect with? At Inspire Choices Network, we create an opportunity for you to bring your voice each and every week to a global platform. We support you, we train you, we bring your podcast out to more than 50 platforms. We are a network of building a community where we're bringing conscious voices to the world. If you're looking to have more of an opportunity, if you're looking to bring what you know to the world, do connect with us. You can contact us at inspirechoicesnetwork.com or you can send an email to becoming a host at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. We'll have a conversation and we'll show you what truly is possible. Welcome back everyone. We are here with Lori Hawkins. We are talking about strategy wrapped in soul. So before we went for break, we were talking about your journey and you are now in the telecom industry. Mm -hmm. How long did you stay in that industry for? So just over 10 years and I was with a young, innovative, amazing, up and coming, telecommunications company, Sprint Canada. Uh -huh. Some people remember them. Yes. And then we were purchased by Rogers. Yes. And I spent a couple of years helping merge sales teams. And, and I just, uh, Rogers is an amazing Canadian company. I have nothing but respect for them. It wasn't a culture for me. And so uh, I naively thought that I would step away from that and just find a leadership role that was just right for me. Mm. So that didn't happen quite that way, and instead I launched my own business. Fantastic. Mm. So was it, um, did you launch your own business out of desire or necessity? I think it was deep in my subconscious, and yet it wasn't something I was fully aware of. So as I took the leap out, it was almost like the path just started to create itself, okay. and I listened. I listened. I fought a little bit against it. Yeah. And I always say, you know, God gives us little whispers, and then when we're not paying attention, He's hit you hard. So yes. I had a few of those you and stepped those. into them. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your business. How long have you been in business for? 10 years. Congratulations. Just, just celebrated 10 years. <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty big milestone it for is. entrepreneurs, yes. right? Uh, so really just 
I took everything that I learned through the corporate world of what I loved and how I love supporting people. And so it's, for me, that strategy wrapped in soul is I am deeply connected to results. I love results. I'm very, I have this I really love driven that. side of me yes. that, which is why sales was a great career because I love to see, oh, here, here's where I am this month. And I got to hit that target next month. And even sales leadership of helping people do that and accomplish that and guide them in that way yes. fit me so well. Beautiful. And then I have this soft soul side that really in that don't lose yourself be the best version of who you are and become all that you're meant to be and live your sacred gifts and so i would say when i first launched my business i went heavy strategy you know okay. i'm the business success strategist i'm going to succeed i'm going to succeed <laughs> and i'm going to help you and your team succeed and it took a little while to realize what organizations really 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 need is the blend of wrapping those together because it's human to human. It's, you know, business is easy. Business is simple. I say that all the time. Business is simple. People are complicated. We are complicated. Right. Human beings are complicated. Right. And need support and love and care and appreciation and valued and to understand what their unique gifts are. And when you can, you know, draw that out of someone right. and then wrap the strategy in it. Okay. Then people can so soar. is your um, process to actually start with the soul mm -hmm. with people. So I really start with the assessments. The the you know we do what I call what is sacred gifts. I'm certified in sacred gifts. So we uncover the sacred gifts along with the strategic side of it, which is the disc or the Myers Briggs. I start okay. there with all the teams I work with. Okay. Yeah, and then how do they work together? Right. right. So it's, you know, even people will come and say, I want to, I want, I want you to come and support my sales team. The reality is first we need to support the people on the sales team. Uh, so I get okay. hired to do the sales skill training and development and then step into how do we uncover the best of each person and create an amazing sales culture and then each of the individuals and the, and the team results will just be Right. They just happen then. So how do we take this? I mean, I love the, the, how you do this, the dance and the blending. Mm. It, it, it's, it's definitely a, a huge gift that you mm. have. How can we do that in our mm. businesses? How can we do that in our communities? You know, there's people who are volunteering on, on, on groups and committees. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people who have their own businesses. They may be large businesses. They may be, you know, a solopreneur. Mm -hmm. How do we utilize that to grow our connection and our strategy simultaneously? Mm -hmm. Well, I think a big part of it is really understanding who you are. Do that work. One of, the, one of the things I love about sacred gifts specifically is we've heard our whole life, find your purpose. What's your purpose? Oh, and you have God-given gifts inside of you, right? Well, what is that? <laughs> How do I find my purpose? I've been chasing it. Like, I know. are you over there? Are you over there? <laughs> Who's got that note? <laughs> Who's got, <laughs> got that so, written down? Or like the Oscars and they're gonna open the envelope and yes. go, oh, yeah, yeah. And even this whole, you have gifts, you have special gifts. It, it, what are those? And so sacred gifts was about feeling on purpose. Because if you can show up every day actually leaning into your truly unique sacred gifts, then you just step into it. Right. And the difference is going through that process to feel on purpose is encouragement, for example, is one of mine. So when that was uncovered, I thought, well, yeah, I, I, I know that. That's a gift. Yes, right. it actually is. It doesn't feel like a gift to me because I've been living it my entire life. Yes. And so here we are chasing this thing. That's and we're, we're being it already. We're being it. Yes. 
And so really being able to uncover that and then live those gifts in whatever, in a, whatever vehicle you choose. Right. It actually doesn't matter then. It, yes, that becomes insignificant. Yes. I remember going through this the same when I started my business. Mm -hmm. We've been in TED years as well. Mm -hmm. And and thinking, okay, where do I specialize? Like, right. What do I have to bring? What makes me unique? Oh, I don't know. I work hard. Mm -hmm. And somebody, um, just a pass-by comment said, Christine, you're a cheerleader for everybody. Right. And I thought, oh, that sounds fun. And mm -hmm. I wrote that down. And years later, like yours encouragement, mm -hmm. I'm like, that is who I be. Right. I am a cheerleader. Right. I, I, and what that means is I see in people what they maybe don't recognize exactly. initially. Mm -hmm. and, and to get to that space of knowing this is my capacity, mm -hmm. and now where do I want to take, where do I want to go play with that capacity? Because you could play anywhere. Yes. Right? Once you, once you truly just lean into and trust that that is your soul piece, you can have any vehicle. You could have chosen 20 different businesses. Right. This one obviously is amazing <laughs> for the gifts you have. At yeah. the same time, you could have a different vehicle and still be as as successful. Right. Right. So I guess that's why, Lori, we've been able to, like you, many of us have had many job mm -hmm. um, elevations. Like we, we continue to move forward and move forward and move forward. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not so much about we're getting better, mm -hmm. but we're applying and learning. It's, it's nearly like we can step back and look at mm -hmm what we created in those moments and then we become we start to acknowledge more and more around our capacities yes so we discover our soul mm -hmm. in this journey and then we can take it and apply it with any strategy mm -hmm. that's fantastic and that's the feel on purpose because now you're living your gifts yes within your vehicle and now you feel on purpose instead of that whole principle of finding my purpose says you have one purpose yes. and, and we're trying to find it except that we could have that in different vehicles and that's okay. Right. I think, I think the, the pressure that mm -hmm. we put on ourselves, that we put on other people when we say you need to find your purpose. Yeah. I think it's an, it's very unjust thing to do mm -hmm. to ourselves and to other people. Mm -hmm. I know um, I was in human resources for, for 25 right. years, yes. right? And people would come to me oftentimes, I want a career, mm -hmm. I want to do this, I want to change, I want... And, and instead of asking, well, what's your purpose? I would say, well, what lights you up and turns you on? Right. What do you enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. what, what do you do? I would actually ask them, tell me what you do for a hobby. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Why do you do that hobby? Those are the nuggets that I've discovered mm -hmm. that can really f lead people to one of their soul purposes. Mm -hmm. and, and when do you feel like it's not work? Where for others, it would feel like hard work. Yes. For you, you can flow for hours in that realm that you're in and it feels right. Mm -hmm. And what's awesome is that's typically when you're having the most impact. So back to results, yes. <laughs> because that's, you know, I don't want to sound like we're having this, oh, that sounds like a really nice ebb and flow. And say, that's what drives the results. Right. When you can step into that place of flow and impact naturally, then the results will happen. Brilliant. And it, I've seen it time and time again. That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, Lori, tell us what's going on in your business, mm -hmm. uh, hawkinspired.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's where they can find you. Have you a beautiful website that people can enjoy? Thank you. Um, the SOAR Experience mm -hmm. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. People can join and the SOAR community as well. So, what else? What else are you creating? What, what can we expect in the future? So, right now, the project, <laughs> it's a project, is really stepping into that whole digital learning platform. Okay. I've, I work with business teams and organizations and I have an online platform for them and I'm transitioning that, repurposing it to be able to support entrepreneurs because I have Fantastic. this huge, it's really been the last few years, this, this gnawing calling that says entrepreneurs really need support right now in that lots of people do strategy, lots of people do soul. There's, there's amazing yes. retreats and learning and, and education and conferences, both. 
what I am looking to, what I was searching for, was where does that come together? Where can I go and have that learning side fed, that growth side fed, and that soul side fed? And that was what the SOAR community was born from, Right, is ne going to networking events and feeling like, mm, this is not quite what I'm searching for. And one day saying, well, if I'm searching for something different, then maybe other women are searching for something different too. Right. And that's why it doesn't feel like a normal networking event because I don't, you know, we're not putting name tags on, we're not yes. walking around telling each other our, our 30 second pitch. It's true connection, true collaboration. Beautiful. And, you know, just have a place that you can come and be exactly it's, who you are. It's a fabulous group. Take the masks off. Come in exactly who you are and surround yourself with other women that are looking and seeking for that same thing. Up levelers, taking them, their businesses and their lives to the next level. So really serious about That's that serious. growth. Okay, and Lori, you are on the Inspired Choices Network. You have your own radio show with us. <laughs> yes, and I have loved the experience. It has really pushed me into my own growth and connecting with people in a different way and hearing other people's stories and wrapping that strategy in soul. So I the SOAR it. experience, Mondays at 9 a.m. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you would like to connect with Lori and you would like to learn how you can take your soul and strategy and blend them together to have an amazing experience, please connect with her at hawkinspired.com. You can also find her on Facebook, The Soar Experience, as well as on Instagram. So please do reach out and come back next week where we'll have another inspiring guest who's changing the world. Thanks, Christine. You're welcome.